Hey there guys, so the big question that we have today is actually a question that uh, we've talked about before. Um, I think I did a video on this before. I know that I've written about it. The question that we have is whether it's correct to create a card for every player, including players who did basically nothing, um, especially at bat. This is something I think that sort of divides people in the uh, community because there are some who feel that every player that had any sort of appearance, even if there was no plate appearance, I think Moonlight Graham, uh, should have a card in any game that uh, tries to simulate a season. And there are others of us who think that it might not necessarily be worthwhile. So I bring this up because of Son Sonny Ruberto, who was a uh, backup catcher for the 1972 Cincinnati Reds. Um, I saw a post about him on Facebook the other day, and I'll show you what the post uh, was all about. So here's the uh, basic side of this Stratomatic card. I don't own the 1972 Stratomatic set, so I this isn't mine. And uh, you'll see that um, he doesn't have very much going his way, if you know how to uh, read your Strat cards. Now if we look over here at the um, uh, advanced side, you can see that he's got um, hit-by-pitch uh, results like all over the place which um, it should be enough to make you think there's got to be something weird going on. I don't know what's going on with this card because he doesn't have a single hit-by-pitch result on the basic game side, but uh, this is sort of the way that it um, turned out. And so there you have it. That's what the premise is behind uh, this uh, video in a nutshell. Um, the uh, question that the person um, on the Stratomatic uh, Facebook uh, group was asking was what happened to his basic side. I don't know. I don't work for the company. I don't know what's going on. I figure it doesn't matter because he had four plate appearances in 1972, as we're about to see. So we'll take a look here. Here is good old Sonny Roberto. Um, now, you'll notice here he has a Cardinals hat on, but um, he never played for the Cardinals. He was drafted by the Cardinals in uh, like 1964, 65, something like that, straight out of high school. Um, but he never really made it up with them. Wound up uh, coming up uh, with the expansion Padres, did very, very little with them, and then eventually had this cup of coffee with uh, the Cincinnati Reds. We're not going to worry much about the minor league stats or anything like that at the moment. Instead, we'll go take a look at his game logs in 72. He played in two games, uh, and there were one after the other. This is um, game 146 for the 72 Reds and 147. Now, the interesting thing about this, and this will tell you what they thought of uh, Roberto, is that uh, when we go look at the uh, Cub, uh, the uh, Reds results, there we go, and we go scroll down to these games that we're talking about, we'll see right away that uh, the Reds had already clinched uh, the division. So they wait until after they clinch the division to give this catcher a try. That kind of tells you what they thought about Roberto. Um, so, yeah, this guy is not, probably not super major league uh, talent, so what did he do in the first game of this doubleheader? Well, or this doubleheader, I'm sorry, of, this, of these two games that he played. Um, well, what he did is he popped out to second base. Um, when he comes up again in the sixth, he grounded out to second base. And then when he finally comes up again in the top of the eighth, he strikes out. This is in the Astrodome, so okay, we can forgive him for that, right? Not a great place to hit. And we go take a look here at this game. What we see in the next game is that Roberto had a single uh, plate appearance at which he was hit by a pitch. And so that is the reason why he has so many times hit by a pitch, because he had four plate appearances, and in one of the four, he was hit by the pitch. So what happened is he came in as a defensive replacement in the bottom of the six with the Reds up 4-1. Um, I'm not sure exactly why he came in for Johnny Bench. I'm guessing that uh, Sparky Anderson probably just wanted to uh, give Bench some rest. Uh, he came up, uh, he, was, he was a catcher here for these uh, four um, uh, plate appearances by the uh, Astros, and he didn't do anything. Then in the uh, top of the seventh inning, he came up second, uh, so Joe Hay got a single to center, and then uh, Roberto was hit by a pitch, and then Bill Plummer, who's uh, the other backup catcher for the Reds, uh, this is what happens when you play a lot with these Sims, you know these players, Bill Plummer comes in to pinch run for him and tells you something about Sony uh, Roberto. So that basically was his history with the uh, Reds in 1972. He played one game and then played one inning in another game and got hit by a pitch in that game and therefore has a Stratomatic card that will allow him to be hit by a pitch over and over again. Now, there's a couple different ways we can look at this, right? Since we have the stats, we could look at his minor league statistics and get an idea of what how he would normally play. 
And as surprising as it is, look at this. I mean, in the minors in uh, 72, he was hit by a pitch three times in 418 plate appearances, right? So he probably shouldn't have that kind of a card. What um, some would say you should do and what, say, OOTP does is it would take these AAA statistics and uh, convert them over to major league equivalency for his 72 season if you're playing with the minor leagues on. And um, you get kind of an idea there how he would play. Now, it's not a perfect system, right? Because you'll always find players who did nothing in real life who uh, in a game like OTP suddenly are like superstars because of the way the equivalency works. It's not a super equivalency system, right? They should hire someone like Dan Samborski to come over and do it, someone who like really deeply studies this stuff. I hate to question OTP and their methods, but I question their methods a lot. However, that approach in general, I think, is much more fitting. I think it's much more fitting to give him a card that fits with what he did overall instead of giving him a card based on four plate appearances and he was hit by a pitch once, so he's hit by a pitch like, you know, in every single one of those numbers. Uh, so that's kind of what, you know, the point of this is and the thing that I really wanted to talk about with you guys. I'm interested to know what the rest of you think. Do you think that a player like uh, Robert, Roberto needs to have a card that um, only matches his very limited number of play appearances? Should we look into major league equivalencies for players like this? Should we just not card them at all and not worry about it and figure that anybody serious enough to play a season like that is going to make it up himself? Like, what's the correct approach for people who create these games? What do you think uh, the uh, most appropriate thing would be to do? Again, my opinion is, though I know it's a little bit of work, you're probably best off doing some sort of a major league equivalency system because that's the thing that would make sense, right? And you have to sort of keep in mind that this person never played a major league baseball. But you need to have a card that can go up and actually has the ability to do something, right? Instead of having a card that does absolutely nothing. Because, you know, for some of these guys, you look at them, you're like, how'd this guy ever make the major leagues? It turns out, and we'll get deeper into this as we go along, it turns out that even the most obscure players in baseball history had some sort of past, um, and many of them played in the minor leagues. Many of them were very well known. Many of them were sort of star players, and that's how they made it that high. It's not the case that uh, these guys were just absolute nobodies who somehow managed to luck their way in or something like that, right? Anyway... I guess that's the sort of the whole gist of this video is an idea that we could maybe do better um, as sim a simulation community. Come up with something that's maybe a little bit more fulfilling and a little bit more realistic um, instead of uh, giving uh, Sonny Roberto a card with uh, nothing but hit by pitch results. Anyway, there you have it. Hope you guys are having a good day. I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye bye.